Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, there, there was my computer just turned off because it had more load. Okay. Uh, where were we? Per Act 28, like all managers need to understand their employees and recognize their company's dash. 29, when managing change, increasing the company's dash may be more important than employee satisfaction. And 30 was during periods of change, managers may have to cope with increased amount. Okay, now I'm going to share it uh, tomorrow also, but tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's class, how many of you are for journal training? How many of you are for journal training version? Me, no? sir. No one? No, sir. I'm for journal training. Done. Yeah. Okay. So only you are for journal training. Uh, all others are for academic? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So tomorrow's class is going to be... Yes, sir. class is going to be for the academic version writing task one only. So in case journal training students want to, want to attend it, they can. But Tomorrow's class is going to be for academic writing task one, and it is going to be, if we are able to finish it in one and a half hours, it's, it's good, but most probably it would take longer, like at least 15 to 20 minutes longer. And for, for the Thursday's class, we would I would be doing the journal training one. So after that, you would have very good understanding on whatever this entire exam is about, and then we'll be moving more towards the practice. Okay. Now I'm going to play section number three. Let's see how you perform. Section three. You will hear a tutor talking to two business students called about their research on managing individuals. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Well, you've both been looking at different styles of managing individuals and companies in the workplace. How's the research going, Philip? Well, I've been looking at why individualism, I mean, individual differences, are such an important area of management studies. When you think about any organization, be it a family business or a multinational company, they're all fundamentally a group of people working together. But it's what these individuals contribute to their places of work that makes you realize how important they are. Of course, they bring different ideas, but it's also their attitudes and their experiences of learning. Diversity is important in these areas too. So why do people behave so differently from one another at work? There are lots of reasons, but research has shown that a lot of it comes down to personality. And the other factor is gender. It's a well-known fact that men and women do lots of things in different ways, and the workplace is no different. Did you look at the effects of this variation on companies? Yes, I did. On the positive side, exposure to such diversity helps encourage creativity, which is generally an asset to a company. But unfortunately, Individual differences are also the root of conflict between staff, and they can lead to difficulties for management, which can sometimes be serious. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30.
Should I give the answers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, 21 was attitude. 22 was gender or sex. 23 was creativity or create creativeness. Fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's yes, sir. continue to the next set of questions, 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Thanks, Philip. So now I guess the two main things to remember here are to identify individual talent and then to utilize it. So Janice, you were looking at identifying different talents in workers. Do you think this is easy for managers to do? Well, currently teamwork is in fashion in the workplace. And in my opinion, the importance of the individual is generally neglected. What managers should be targeting is those employees who can take the lead in a situation and are not afraid to accept the idea of responsibility. Mm, that's true, Janice. But unfortunately, many managers think the entire notion of encouraging individuality amongst their staff is far too hard. Yes, that may be true. But I think one of the most important tasks of managers is to consider the needs of the individual on one hand and group cooperation and conformity on the other. It requires creative thinking on the part of management to avoid tension. So Janice, what kind of people do you think companies should be looking for? Well, it has to start from the very beginning when companies are looking for new employees. When the personnel department is choosing between applicants, they need to look for someone who's broken the mold and can think for themselves. Instead, people making these decisions often use a range of psychological tests to see if a person is a problem solver or will do as they're told. I'm not convinced these qualities are actually the most important. So do you think being a good team player is overrated? No. It's not overrated. You do need to learn the rules and learn them fast. No individual can get around this if you're working in an organization. So how should managers deal with this? Rewards. When an individual demonstrates the behavior the organization expects, some kind of incentive can be given. What's important here is that this happens right at the beginning, so new recruits learn the rules of the system immediately. Also, the incentive should be something the individual actually wants. And this isn't always just money. Mm. Come back to you, Philip. You were saying that recognition of good performers is essential. Mm. Now, what else should managers be looking for? Well, managing people means you not only have an understanding of your employees, but you also recognize the culture of the organization. In fact, for some organizations, creativity and individuality may be the last thing they want to see during working hours. Very true. Yes, but managing people isn't as easy as it looks. For example, change in the workplace can be quite tricky, especially if there's a need to increase profit. And at times like these, managers may have to give priority to profit rather than individual staff needs. Mm. Yes, and that creates difficult situations for people. Yes, but what's important is that managers are able to deal with quite high levels of personal stress. During times of change, they should be thinking not only about the strain on their staff, but take time out to think of themselves. Absolutely. So what are the implications of that? That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, 24 is A, 25 is B, 26 is A, 
27 is B, 28 culture, 29 profits or profit, 30 is strain or strain, stress or strain. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's have a look at 31 to 40 now. They're requiring you to give only one word. Write one word only for each answer. Preparation for field work trip to Namibia in dash. Then they're saying rock art in Namibia maybe. Rock art in Namibia maybe. Painting, drawn engraving. Earliest explanation of engravings of animal footprints. They were used to help dash learn about tracking. But why are the tracks usually dashed? Why are some engravings realistic and, other, and others unrealistic? Why are the unrealistic animals sometimes not dashed? Wise men may have been trying to control wild animals with dash. Earlier explanation was due to scholars over generalizing from their experience of a difficult culture. Move on to 36 to 40. If you look at a site from a dash, you, redu you reduce visitor pressure. To camp on a site may be disrespectful to people from that dash. Undiscovered material may be damaged by dash. You should avoid dash or tracing rock art as it is too fragile. In journal, your aim is to leave the site. Let's start with section four now. And this time, I'm not going to stop where, uh, in those questions. I'll just play these things. You will hear part of a lecture about cave paintings and other types of rock art. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the first seminar in preparation for our archaeological fieldwork in Namibia. We are fantastically lucky to have received partial research funding for this trip from our institute. So I shall expect 200% attention and participation from you all. First in this seminar, I'm going to give a brief introduction to contemporary research on rock art. And in the second part, I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts for our fieldwork trip in April. So please listen very carefully. I'm first going to focus on the interpretation of rock art in Namibia. We are very fortunate to be going to an area where you can find some of the most important sites in the entire world. And I hope to show you how easy it is for everyone to make mistakes in looking at cultures which are different from our own. The first and most important lesson we have to learn. In Namibia, there are both paintings and engravings. That's where the surface of the rock is cut out. Many of the engravings show footprints of animals and most scholars used to think that the purpose of these was simple and obvious. This rock art was like a school book with pictures to teach children about tracks, which track belonged to which animal, giraffe, lion, and so on. But there were some mysteries. First, when you look at a typical Namibian painting or engraving, you see the tracks are repeated. There are dozens of tracks for the same animal. Well, you'd expect just one clear illustration if the reason, um, the aim was to teach tracking. Now, 
there were two more problems. Why are some of the engravings of animals very accurate, as you would expect, or clearly identifiable, and others quite unrealistic? And another mystery, some of these unrealistic animals, that's in the engravings, seem to be half human. Some, for example, have got human faces. Many researchers now think that these were pictures the wise men engraved of themselves. They believed they could use magic to control the animals they had drawn, so the hunters could only catch them. This shows you some of the dangers of coming from one culture to another, as we'll be doing, without understanding it fully. Scholars imagine that children looked at rock art pictures to learn to track, just because they themselves had learned skills from pictures. Many researchers now believe that rock art had a much more complex purpose. Now, before I invite you to join in a discussion in this second part of the seminar, I'd like to make some very important points about our fieldwork, and in fact, any field trip to look at rock art. We're going to a number of sites, and we won't always be together. The single largest problem faced by people who manage the sites is, yes, I'm sure you guessed, damage caused by visitors, even though it's usually unintentional. Whenever you do go to a site, don't forget, you can learn many things from observing at a distance, instead of walking all over it. This can really help to reduce visitor pressure. People often say, well, there's only two of us, and just this one time. But maybe thousands of people are saying the same thing. And then, some basic rules to guide you. We'll have our own camp near a village. But remember never to camp on a site if you go on your own. It may be disrespectful to the people of that culture. And certainly don't make fires, however romantic it may seem. It's really dangerous in dry areas. And you can easily burn priceless undiscovered material by doing so. So, how are we going to enjoy the rock art on our field trip? By looking at it, drawing it, and photographing it. Never by touching it or even tracing it. Rock art is fragile and precious. Remember that climbing on rocks and in caves can destroy in a moment what has lasted for centuries. So no heroics in Namibia, please. Try to be extra careful and help others to be too. Oh, and uh, lastly, Please don't even move rocks or branches to take photographs. You should leave the site intact. I'm sure I can rely on you to do that. Well, that's about all I want to say before today's first discussion. But if you have any questions, please ask them now. Oh, and um, don't forget you'll find some fascinating information about worldwide sites on the internet. Right, first question then. is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. I, I would be sharing the answer sheet also on the uh, group, on the Facebook group, so you would be able to see how the answer sheet, answer sheet actually looks like. Now, uh, let's have a look at what the answers are. Thirty-one is April. 32 children, 33 repeated, 34 human, 35 magic, 36 distance, 37 culture, 38 fire, 39 touching, and 40 is intact. Yes, sir. Right? Please, yes, calculate, sir. please calculate your score. Tell me what you got out of 40. Each sir, one? 35. 35? Yes, sir. Who else was able to do it? Some people were give, uh, sending me private messages that they were not able to understand 
uh, the audio because the internet wasn't working well. So I'll be sharing the audio and you can do it at your own. But anyone who was able to do it properly, please share your scores. So I have also scored 35 out of 40. Okay, so 35 actually means 8 bands. So most probably if you do the next exam, you will be standing at 37 to 38. Uh, the actual exam is perhaps somewhat like that or sometimes even easier than this. So in case you got 35 on your first attempt, you would probably get 8 or 8.5 on the real exam also. Okay, sir. Okay. Anyone else who attempted it? Ms. Bisma, did you att uh, attempt it? No, sir. Internet was okay. interrupting. Okay, so I'll, I'll be sharing it uh, in a few minutes on the group. Now I want you guys to tell me, did you do the reading exam which was assigned yesterday? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you check your answers? No, yes, sir. sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. For me, it's no. I didn't check the answers. You did not check your answers. Okay. Let's have a look at the exam now. Number one. Okay, uh, how, how many of you check your answers? Sir, so I checked my answers. Okay, uh, what, did, what was your score, Ms. Asma? Yes, sir. What was, what was your score on the reading exam? So it was 35 out of 40. So 35 out of 40. Good. Uh, anyone else who did the exam? So there were many like confusing questions. Okay. Like the answer was not given, although I have written it true or false, something like that. But they are very confusing. Can Some questions tell, are very confusing. Can you tell me which ones? So it's number 13. Okay. It's confusing okay. for me. Okay. And number 11, 11. as well. Uh, let's look at question number 11. I want you guys to go to page number 109. Or I think it would be page 111, perhaps. Number 11, the entrance to the campsite. They didn't talk about that. It wasn't given. The entrance to the campsite is blocked after 10 p.m. What did you choose? Ms. Asma, what did you sir, say? I choose it false. False, sir. It's not correct. But where are they talking about this? The entrance to the campsite is locked after 10 p.m. Are they telling you anything about when it is closed? It's not written anywhere, sir. No, it's sir, not, it's not written. Yes, it's not given. If you look at 13, okay. what did you choose for 13? Sir, I choose not given. You are not allowed to put food on open fires. They are saying the lighting of fires is strictly prohibited. So you cannot light a fire. So if you can, so it is given. It is, it is true. Okay, sir. Got it. Got it? Yes, sir. It's yes, sir. Okay. So uh, anyone else? I think most people did not do it. So I want you guys to do it for tomorrow. I would be now assigning you guys on the Facebook group. I will be giving four listening exams for the listening for listening exams, and I would be sharing one book which would be having five reading exams. I want you to do them. Also check those answers in the next four or five days. Are you getting the point? Okay, sir. In yes, the next yes. four five, five days, I know some people would be working and you're also fasting. So you might not get enough time to even do the homework. So for the next four or five days, for the next two, three days, I'm assigning you guys four, um, like I would be giving you eight listening exams 
and I would be giving you five reading exams. So after that, you will see that your listening and reading would no longer be a problem. And we would uh, tomorrow be having perhaps uh, a class which would last for one and a half to two hours, perhaps more than one okay. and a half hours. And it could be for uh, the academic one. Those who are for journal training, in case they want to attend it, they can. But if they want to skip, they can skip it. Now, uh, that would be the end of the class. I want you guys to now go to the Facebook uh, page and I would be sharing the homework with you guys. Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, okay sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that.